Hello, it's me Ian and welcome to HELP. My school trip is magic. Our magicians are no longer supply teachers. They are now masquerading as staff in some popular attractions. And because we know you know them, we've disguised them even more. We've secretly filmed the results with special hidden cameras. We take a visit to an opera house today, where they specialise in classical ballet and opera. You can't beat opera for that. Wonderful music. It can reach inside you and caress your soul. It calms you, lifts away your troubles and takes you to a land of peace and tranquility. Will you turn that off? I'm trying to tell the viewers about peaceful music. <clears throat> Here's what's coming up on today's show. Catherine summons some musical magic that will have you and her off your seats. James produces a floater you'll be happy to copy in Tricks of the Trade. You've been sending in clips of all your best magic tricks and later on I'll be picking my favourite. It's the wannabe wizards. And John and Fergus are Victorian gents with a curious cure for hiccups. Boom! <laughs> Let's hope there's no hiccups with the magic. Do you think you'd be able to tell if your school trip was magic? Do you? This is Catherine. She's an ace magician and she's in the frame for this next school trip. This is year five getting on the coach. They've been set up by their teachers and their parents. They've been on plenty of normal school trips before, but never a magical one. They've no idea. The only thing they do know is they're off to the Royal Opera House. Many classics have been performed here like Swan Lake, Figaro and the Nutcracker. This school trip is blissfully unaware. They're in for some cracking magic by our very own prima magician. Since the Opera House is also home to the Royal Ballet and Catherine loves to dance, she's turned up in her tutu. I thought I'd make an extra special effort today, so I'm wearing sequins, but also a tutu because we're at the ballet. Catherine's got too too excited. Nobody told her she's overdressed for this trick. She better get backstage because the kids are about to make their big entrance. That's better, less flashy, less obvious, Catherine. The trip is learning about dancing and singing while Catherine is preparing for the magic she'll be bringing. Lights, hidden camera, action. Here come the class now. First positions, please. Hello, boys and girls. Hello. That sounds suspiciously like a French accent. Her ballet disguise is très chic. I work here, so welcome to the Opera House, home of the Royal Ballet. Now, does anyone know what you call a dancer that dances in the ballet? Careful, it's a trick question with a trick accent. Yes. Ballerina? It's close. A lot of people think this, that it's called a ballerina, but not the case. When a dancer dances in the ballet, she is called a ballet dancer or a ballet student. You only get the name ballerina if you are the most exceptional female soloist. That's true, even if Catherine's accent is fake. And if you are the best ballerina, then you get to be called prima ballerina, which is the absolute elite. But you know, it's not only the ballet dancers that make the ballet so magnificent. What else do you think could be that makes it so beautiful to watch? Any ideas? Yes. The costume. Excellent, yes, they have the most beautiful costumes, aren't they? Very romantic, yes? Music. The music, absolutely. See, one of my favourite things is the music, and I love listening to the classical ballet music. She's lying, she normally likes fat hip-hop beats. For me, it makes me feel like I can float, and I just love it, I adore it. Here's where the facts end and the fantasy begins. So we're going to do an exercise now where you all stay seated. A magic exercise, that is. I want you to close your eyes and listen to the music that's going to be played and imagine that you are floating through the countryside. The magic is coming up, quite literally. Okay. Relax, close your eyes. Perfect. They totally believe her. They've all got their eyes shut. But will they be able to keep them closed when the magic begins? Can we have some music, please? Music, maestro. Magic, maestro. Listen to the soaring melody and how it lifts your spirit. And it's beginning to lift Catherine. Will anyone notice? 
He's sneaking a peek. Catherine's derriere is in the air. Someone else has noticed. The word is spreading through the class. More eyes are open and they can't believe what they're seeing. I'd say Catherine's at least 60 centimetres off that stool. This magic is certainly going up in my estimations. The whole class have not only got their eyes open, but they can't take them off Catherine. This school trip is way up there with the best that it's gonna get better and better. They can't work it out. She's in mid-air and seemingly unaware. They must know it's magic, but they haven't worked out who their mysterious ballet teacher is. Catherine's floating back to Earth and the class's jaws are dropping. You don't see Darcy Bustle doing this on Strictly now, do you? I don't know about them, but I can't see how she's done that. And I know magic. Well, I know some magicians. Wasn't that lovely? Understatement of the century. I just adore that song. It's so beautiful. Some beautiful magic there too. Catherine told them how music can lift your mood. She didn't tell them it could physically lift you too. They had been asked to keep their eyes closed and imagine. They couldn't resist opening them, but still wondered if they'd imagined the whole thing. The class could see underneath Catherine, but they still haven't seen through her story. And you know, I have that get me up every morning. That music certainly does help Catherine get up. And there's more magic coming up. You ain't seen nothing yet, it's a magical pirouette. Now James is going to set you a magical challenge in tricks of the trade. If you fancy yourself as a magician, here's a trick you can try on your mates. James is going to show you how to make a paper clip like this, float in a glass of water like this. Can you work out how to do it? Keep watching and you'll find out how to do this metal magic later in the show. Let's rejoin our school trip to the Opera House. Catherine's been teaching the class about the ballet. I hope our twinkle-toed magician doesn't slip up before our big finish. When I was a little girl, I used to pretend that I was a ballerina. Ironically, Catherine is still pretending to be a ballerina, but they haven't realised she's not what she seems. I used to dream about it all the time and I used to spend hour upon hour dancing in my room pretending that I was a prima ballerina. So much so that my father built me my very own miniature opera house and this is the very one he built me. And I used to play with this for hours and hours. Who's she kidding? She still does. But that box is a magic one. I used to play with this doll which is my first ever ballet doll. Or is that a Catherine action figure? They certainly can't figure her out. Uh, she is a ballerina and I used to play with her inside the opera house like this and I used to imagine this was me. I used to make her do pirouettes and I thought she was so beautiful and I'd imagine that other people would be cheering for me and throwing flowers on the stage and I just used to love it. So I want you to try and imagine now that you see the ballerina in there. Can you imagine that she is real? Could you imagine? I can't hear you. Could you really imagine? What's that box? You really could? I could imagine this too, you know? Whoa! How did she get in there? Catherine's dolls come to life! <gasps> Beautiful! She just can't believe it! Stupendous dancing, outstanding magic and a stunned audience. It's so stunning. Beautiful. Thank you, Megan. You know, she is a real ballet dancer from the Royal Ballet. I don't know about Royal Ballet. This class need a ballet down. Obviously, the theatre is all about acting. You know this, yes? They do. And for Catherine's final act, here comes her denouement. Basically, she's going to come clean. I'll tell you a little secret. I've been acting, you know? I don't really work here. My name is Catherine. They're happy about that. And all of you have been set up by your teachers and your parents and you're all being filmed right now. There's the camera over there and there's the camera over there and there's the camera over there and you're going to be on CBBC How My School Trip is Magic! <laughs> bravo, bravo! Catherine gave a well choreographed performance worthy of a standard ovation. Can one get an encore? For her first act, Catherine got carried away with the music and the class couldn't take their eyes off her. I actually peeked it and I saw that um, she was acting. 
She was on the chair floating. Catherine didn't peek too soon because she had another trick. She put a doll in the box and it became a real person. You know? Not only a real person, a real dancer from the Royal Ballet. It was like the doll came to life and yeah. it was... It was astonishing, amazingly awesome. This dancing trick had all their heads spinning. I thought that trick was so, so amazing. The school trip had no idea Catherine was a magician. How long would it take for you to shout? Still to come, James will unleash the secret in Tricks of the Trade. Have you figured it out yet? And Fergus and John are lords of the manor on another school trip. Fergus tries to catch some radio waves, but will the magic leave the class catching flies? Or will they realise their school trip is magic? It's glamorous! Yes! Bravo! What? But first, we ask you to send in clips of yourself performing your best magic tricks. We receive loads of clips from all over the country. Each week I'll be choosing a favourite wannabe wizard and showing them to you guys. My wannabe wizard this time is Eleanor from Kinross. Hi guys, magic trick I'm going to show you today is magic rings. My favourite. First I need my assistant, White Rabbit. And as you know, White Rabbits come out of hats. So I've got my magic hat here. No rabbit in there. As it's empty, I've got my magic wand. Vital for a magician. One, two, three. Then White Rabbit comes out. Wow, you'd never catch me with a puppet. I need you to get me three rings and a rope, okay? So. Got one, two, three, and your rope here. Right, as you can see, normal rope, nothing wrong with it. That's a normal looking piece of rope. And rings are normal too, okay? We're with you. So I'll thread this first ring onto the rope, like this, and twist it up. Then I take my other two rings and bend them over. And as you can see, they don't get past this ring here. Those rings are okay. going nowhere. So, I'm going to have a go at trying to pull these rings off. Okay? Not possible. So, one, two, three. What? And all three rings come off the rope. Let's get a rewind. One, two, three. Those rings came right off. That tricky rope was dope, Eleanor. This is Fergus, he's one of our strongest magicians. Here's John muscling on the action as usual. The dynamic duo are about to flex their skills on a new school trip. This is your five clambering on the coach. They've been set up by their sneaky parents and cheeky teachers like Mr. Curtin here, who's going to be an uh, glamorous assistant in the next magic trick. The class think they're going on a regular school outing, but it's a trip of a lifetime. They're on their way to the Jeffrey Museum to learn about the history of the home over the last 400 years. Nearly as long as John's been a magician. Here he is now. Don't sit down too long, mate. You'll become an exhibit. John and Fergus need to get made up in case the kids get on their case. Because the museum features a Victorian sitting room, John thought he'd get into character and sit around. He is doing his research. Let's hope John gets the tricks the right way round. The class are about to have their school trip turned on its head, but they have no idea what story John's invented. For this particular presentation, we're, we're looking at uh, inventions and cures uh, of the Victorian age, so I, I'm going to have a cure for hiccups, which is ridiculous, because I can't remember the last time I had hiccups. It better all go without a hiccup, as the kids have arrived with Mr Gurton. John and Fergus are fully undercover, acting as Victorian gents would do. But it's nearly time for the magic to happen. John's wound up and ready to go. Come on, Fergus, mate, the clock is ticking. Look, no, really, seriously, it is. The kids are now inside the museum, looking at the historical homes. Fergus made it there okay. They're both in situ, the cameras are set, and John and Fergus look like they're on the set of Downton Abbey. Here come the class, stepping back in time and about to have the magical time of their lives. 
Now, the Victorians, as you know, or you may not know, but you're going to know once I've told you and then you'll know. The Victorians, uh, they used to love lots and lots of strange things. They were strange people, the Victorians. They used to like strange inventions and all sorts of things and, and experimentation and invention uh, and also cures. They, they were mad about cures, strange cures, weird cures for illnesses. They used to have a thing called pasting. He is very pasting. amused by John's pasting patter and the magic's not even started yet. What they used to do, is that have an infected area, let's pretend that it, it was, it was uh, Thomas's arm here, it was infected. What they would do is they would make a paste. They would make a paste and it would be made of herbs and spices and cow manure. Mentioning poo always gets a great reaction. And then they'd rub it on the infected wound and they would think that would heal it. Of course, it didn't do anything. In fact, it probably made it worse. But another thing, another cue they had, it was very ridiculous, I'd like to show you now, was a cure for hiccups. Now, how many people have had hiccups? Yes, you all had hiccups. It's terrible, isn't it? You, you sat there trying to have a conversation, and you're trying to, and you're doing, all, all. it's it's absolutely ridiculous, Thomas. And, and they had they had cures for it. And, and this is a very good. This is what we call uh, a hiccup frame. Some magic coming up will stop wind coming up. Now the hiccup frame would cure hiccups. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try and demonstrate the hiccup frame with you. Uh, and then one of your teachers to help me here. Have I got a teacher who can volunteer? Yes, you sir. Come on out. Yes. Jolly good. Give me a bit. Yes, give me a round, round of applause. Round of applause, boys and girls. Come on. Your teacher's about to start a magic trick. Let's hope he's got his best shirt on. Oh, dear. Mr. Gurton, wonderful. Mr. Gurton, would you just stand here, please? Wonderful. Now, the way that they hiccup in device worked, uh, it was it uses two things. It used uh, some ropes, two ropes like these, uh, and it used a silk handkerchief like this. Now, it's actually three things, the third being magic. What you would do is you would get your silk handkerchief and you would tie it around the ropes, like so. So we would tie the two ropes together. Mr. Gurdon, can we hear your like very this. best hiccup? Yes. <laughs> Do you get to be oh, loud, no, a bit no, no. loud, a bit louder, Mr. Gurdon? <laughs> very no, good, no, very no, good. No, 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 your hiccups have got to be lots worse than that. Really hiccup. <laughs> very good, is that good enough, boys and girls? Yeah. Wonderful. Great hiccup acting from Mr. Gurton there. Shave a bit sharp. And raise your arms. That's it. Close the curtains, <laughs> Mr. Gurtons. He hasn't heard that one before. Uh -huh. No, we'll just wrap. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there. Fergus and John are now wrapping the silken string around Mr. Gurton. Tie the handkerchief around his middle like Excellent. this. Excellent. Now, we then take one of the ropes and pass one of the ropes around the body like this. You can take that one and I'll take this one. Now, what we're going to do is pass these ropes in a moment through this little hole in the side of the hiccuping frame. Wonderful. Now, Mr. Gordon, if you could just step back into the frame, please. The teacher is now tied securely into the frame. There's no way he can get out. Can you keep hiccuping, Mr. Gordon? Wonderful. That's it. Keep hiccuping. Now, in the old days, they had lots of cures for hiccups. Don't overplay your part, sir. That you sound like a frog, Mr. Gordon. Not quite as often. That's better, thank you. Now, they used to drop a cold key down the back, or they used to, um, they used to, uh, they make you stand on your head and drink a glass of water. We won't make you do that. Another thing that they used to do is, uh, is this. Boom! <laughs> that surprised her, but the big shocker's still coming up. To get rid of the hiccups with this device, what we'd do is pull on the ropes, and the idea is that the ropes would pass cleanly through the body. The silk handkerchief would stay in place, protecting the body. The ropes would pass cleanly through the body, eliminating the hiccups and making him cured for life. Watch carefully, the teacher is tied inside that frame. I'd like you to step forward on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three! And there oh, he is, completely Timothy. free! Whoa, he's melted right through the rope! And the ropes oh, have passed really completely brilliant. through his body. Thank you very much. The rope's still in one piece and she's nearly in bits. He's usually tied up marking papers, but Mr. Gurton got literally tied into this wooden frame. With Ferguson John's help, he melted through that rope, and some of the class couldn't cope. The teacher stepped through, and now the magic's going to step up. Fergus catches radio waves, but will he have the class doing a Mexican wave? Now it's time for James to reveal the secret and tricks of the trade. James will show you how to make a paperclip float in a glass of water. Have you worked it out yet? Do you just drop it in and hope for the best? Didn't work earlier. How about clipping it on the edge of the glass? Well, that's not floating, is it? Here's the secret. Get another paper clip, then bend the middle part of that paper clip into an L shape like this. Balance the other clip on top and slowly put the whole thing into the water. Easy does it, Captain. 
Now carefully remove the L-shaped paper clip and the other one will be left floating on top of the water. You might want to use that paper clip to file the trick under awesome. Back to the museum of the home where our magicians are dressed as Victorian gents. But they're lying to this school trip. That's not very gentlemanly, is it? Fergus is about to talk inventions, but he's been inventive with the truth. One of the other things that the Victorians were fascinated by was invention. And this joy of invention led to uh, the invention of the radio. Oh, yes. Popularised by a man named Marconi. Marconi, I love a little bit of macaroni, don't you? She clearly doesn't like macaroni. Or maybe it's John's jokes. Over here we have some uh, early antique radios. Now, uh, Timothy, I believe this is your favourite, isn't it? The this 1930s. is my favourite. This, this is not from the Victorian era. This is the 1920s. 1920s. The Edison 423, a beautiful radio, dual dial, dual dial dual system. Dial. Rather yes. primitive and made from? Uh, made from mahogany, pure oh, mahogany. Mahogany? mahogany? <laughs> well, I wouldn't believe that. Um, all this here, though, rather primitive, wouldn't you say? What we've got over here is something a bit more trendy. Yes. It's a 1982 model, only 15. 15 of these made in the country. You should have a look at home, see if you've got one of these. It's worth an absolute fortune, bucket loads. The only thing it's really worth is watching, as it's going to be a great right. trick. Actually, this is the Phoenix, the Phoenix 127, and it Phoenix still works, I believe. It still works. Yes, we can still turn it on. Unfortunately, we can't tune it in. It hasn't got an aerial. Uh, but the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix was a, a very popular model. In fact, when the Phoenix was in the shops, they absolutely flew off the shelves. Flew now, the shelves. I'm just Boy, going you know. to cover this up. It may have flown off the shelves, but all this trick hit the heights. What Timothy's going to do is raise that radio into the air. Oh. And what's that is going to do, because, Timothy, wouldn't you believe that in Victorian times, not everybody could afford a radio. Not everyone could afford a radio. Wasn't that a shame? That's correct. Yeah. Yes, they couldn't. So what they did, those crafty, sneaky little Victorians, is they made use of a radio wave catcher, which we have here. That looks suspiciously like a fishbowl. Now, what Timothy's done is he's sent those radio waves flying around the room. You may feel one past your ear, you may even hear a little one. If you do hear a hint of a radio wave, I'd like you to raise your hand in the air. You'll feel them coming past you, you will feel it at some point. Raise your hand in the air or you could give a little wave. Can anyone feel a radio wave yet? Oh dear. Right, well, anyway, I shall collect the radio waves that I can see in the radio waves. There you go. Catcher. There's a That's low a note under one. there. Some above the head, just and above the heads there. Just we above have the head. high note just there. Wonderful, yes. What about just behind your ear? I believe yes, there's a little. Oh, there's a big radio wave here, Timothy. <laughs> Round we go. Fantastic. Fergus is pretty handy with that ball, and he's hoping the class will be bowled over with the magic any minute. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now, if we bring these back. Don't let them escape. Oh, very good. Very good. Fergus has caught the radio waves and he's holding them in with that book and the class are not on his magical wavelength yet. All we need to do is leave a moment for those radio waves to settle. Yes. Once those radio waves have settled, something quite remarkable will happen. Yes. Are you ready, boys and girls? Yes. You won't believe your ears. There they are. There we go. Wow, that Victorian pop music sounds very modern. <gasps> Remarkable. Incredible. Remarkable. Yeah. They're clapping, but there's more. It depends how many radio waves you could collect on one trip. And only a true expert of the radio wave collector would know exactly how many. I have a rough idea, so let's see if we have any more. Oh, I like that. I might do a little bit of a wiggle. Please don't, John. I'm just eating. Well, it looks like he's enjoying it. As well as you, Timothy. Yes, why not? The magic's working, John's twerking. Now, I think we should try that one more time. Do you agree, boys and girls? Yes. Yes, one more time. Oh, How's dear. he doing that? Yes. The book oh, is dear. catching those sun waves, but the magic's about to turn up to volume 11. Timothy, those radio waves seem to be confuddling themselves. They are confuddling, and you know what? I think this radio's a little bit confuddled as well. Look. No, Timothy! Oh, it's gone! Marvellous! Yes! Whoa, that's incredible! The radio's disappeared, they can't believe it! Now, boys and girls, quieten down nice and quietly. We do actually have a slight confession here for you today. I enjoyed that radio show and now it's time for our undercover magicians to show and tell their big secret. We don't actually work here, believe yeah. it or not. And we are magicians. My name is Fergus. My name's John. And you have all been set up by your schools, your teachers, and your parents. And there's a hidden camera there, there's a hidden camera there, there's a hidden camera there, hidden camera there. And you're all going to be on CBBC's Help My School Trip Adventure! Those reactions were off the hook. Air turntable.
Mabel and John's dancing, I've seen it all. But what did our wannabe DJ think of it? I, I can't explain it. It's, <laughs> it. It was just too cool. We'll just wrap. <laughs> well, let me help you explain. First, there was a magical frame for curing hiccups. One, two, three. And there Marvelous, he is, completely Timothy. free if you just step to the side. It's a bit freaky, I didn't understand, because he was tied up, but how did it go, go away? John revealed a radio, then there was some interference from Fergus. Timothy, those radio waves seem to be confuddling themselves. They are confuddled, and you know what? I think this radio's a little bit confuddled as well. Look! No, Timothy! It was really cool when the um, radio disappeared, because everyone was like, where's the radio gone? It may have gone, but it left a lasting impression on the class. It was the best day of my life. They never suspected a thing, but this dungeon trick left everyone happy. If your radio vanishes, here's a little tip. Turn it on, you'll be able to hear it and find out where it is. Huh? How would you turn it on if you don't know where it is? Details. <clears throat> anyway. See you later, but until then, if you're on a school trip and you think something magic's going on, maybe you'll find yourself shouting, HELP! My school trip is magic! <laughs>